Hey folks. Well, it just occurred to me. I had mentioned this Glock that I've been working on the other night. And uh, I failed to uh, go into detail about it. Um, so uh, I, I just finished it last evening right before I went to bed. So, uh, well, let's just go over it. Um, you guys know I'm not a big fan of Glocks. That being said, they're incredibly easy to work on. And uh, you could always make any Glock better. So we'll just get into the basics. Standard issue Glock 17. Uh, it should be clear. We are clear. Um, it's a Gen 5. Um, I gave it my usual treatment. Um, well, let's just get into it. Let's start at the frame, uh, where the serial numbers are. Um, pulled the, pulled the trigger group out. Um, I didn't change anything. I just polished, um, cleaned up stuff, cleaned up the trigger bar, um, polished the pivot points, uh, knocked off the edges of the trigger bar, um, cleaned up edges, um, Basic, basic, basic stuff that if you spent any amount of time actually getting familiar with your gun and working with it, you'd understand. I didn't get into changing springs because that's not what he wanted. He didn't want to drop in trigger. He wanted to try and not spend a lot of money, but improve the gun. Got it. We can do that. Um, it's just time. Um, again, polishing and cleaning. Uh, that being said, we brought the trigger, I, I brought the trigger pulled down to around five and a half pounds. Um, still safe for carry without, you know, a, a safety. Um, and it, it, it degridded the trigger. Let's put it that way. We degridded the trigger. Um, cleaned it up a little bit. So it's got a smoother pull. Um. Nice and crisp. Uh, what else did I do? <sighs> Being a Glock, um, the Magwell is a sticking point for me. Um, this comes from shooting competitively. I like a clean, smooth magazine insertion and removal. So I uh, cleaned up the Magwell. Uh, it's got a slight, these Gen 5s have a nice slight built-in mag, uh, flared magwell. The problem is, is there's usually a nasty lip around the bottom edge of this. I, that's gone now. Uh, it's simple matter of a file and time and patience and being careful. Um, I cleaned it up with a diamond file and then polished it with a thousand grit sandpaper and water. Um, nice, smooth, um, well, here. nice and smooth. All right. Um, what else do we have? Ooh, okay. We'll grease my hand and get that grease off of there. Go. Yes. We like grease at this place. As you can see, um, it got a paint job. Um, we tried something different. Uh, this, uh, roll stamp area was not taking paint for nothing for some reason. And, um, the base finish was fine. So I didn't want to get into it and start, uh, scuffing it. So we just made a window. Um, he wanted something different. He's going to get something different. Now, that being said, if he doesn't like it, of course, I'll go back through and I will, uh, clean that up as best I can without having to scuff it and uh, see if we can't get it to take paint. It's a simple matter of just masking off the rest of it and blasting that. Um, it's got the double spring. I'm not a fan of this recoil assembly, mainly because it's got the polymer insert. I'm trying to try and talk him into putting in a Wolf Alpha. Um, that's the one bit, and it's not, they're not expensive. Um, barrels, everything's in good shape. Uh, I just gutted this thing 
and cleaned and polished. Uh, I um, polished the uh, striker. I, I mean, I, I did everything I could to lighten the trigger pull without making it too light and increasing reliability. And that's and that's the end game here is to make it more user friendly and increase reliability. So it was a nah. It's about three four hours worth of work, um, not including not including the paint curing time and whatnot. Um, the paint was easy. Uh, it was just you strip. Let's get into that. You strip the slide, just gut it. Um, I didn't take the sights off because um, there's really no need. Um, we're talking not high temperatures here. You pull the striker out. It's got this nice little red plate on the back. Got to you put that on. You pull the striker out. You put um, you pull the uh, extractor out and extractor string. Uh, of course, you take the bolt, the barrel and uh, recoil assembly off. You then. Wipe down the slide as best you can with some solvent, um, blow it dry. Put this in a pan, a regular cooking cooking pot. Cover it with water um, and a couple of drops of Dawn just soap. Put it on the stove, um, bring it to a low boil, and then set it to and then turn it down to where it's just simmering, and let that simmer for about ten minutes. That should get every trace of oil off of this that you possibly can. Pull it out, let it dry. Um, at that point, wipe it down the external surfaces that you're going to paint with isopropyl alcohol, let it dry. Mask. Um, you'll mask off the sights unless you want to remove them. That's, that's entirely up to you. Um, you'll cover... The rear portion where the striker goes in, mask across the bottom of the um, slide uh, up to where the chamber is. Actually, you can go all the way to the front if you want. You're going to want to cover this, um, the chamber face. Um, cover that whole thing with tape. Um, it, it can be crafty and selective. And try and leave these surfaces around the chain, uh, the um, uh, slide opening where the uh, bullet gets extracted. Um, you're also going to kind of cover where the strike, uh, the extractor goes. Just take a little piece of tape and tuck in there. Um, at that point, you're ready to paint. Um, I would wipe it down with a cloth again to get your fingerprints off to just damp. Slightly damp with uh, isopropyl alcohol, wipe wipe off the surfaces that where you were handling it. I use an old Amazon box <laughs> as as a holder, and you're going to want to sit it on the edge of the box where it's sitting like that, where your bottom of your slide sticking out, so you can hit hit that with a little bit of paint too. Um, from there, uh, light coats with some alumahide, Brownells alumahide too whatever color you like, get a good uniform coverage. You're going to run into instances like this until you get, until it, you get good at it. And then even then, um, just one little missed fingerprint will do, will, will do this. So it's just trial and error. If, if, if it doesn't take, wipe the whole thing off without um, alcohol before the paint has a chance to set up, start over. Uh, my problem was is I ran out of paint, <laughs> or I would have kept on going. Um, I've actually got more coming. Uh, and then once you get it covered, you get the coverage that you like, and it you think it looks it good. It's going to change a little bit. Bring it someplace where nobody can touch it for a while. I usually do the painting outside, and then bring it in to this room and to close, um, leave the fan on. I have a small fan here on the workbench top. I have it facing away from this, but still circulating air in the room. And I'll just let it sit for like an hour to where it's not fair, not super tacky. 
Um, at that point, you can peel the paint, uh, peel the tape off, masking tape off. Get every lick of that masking tape off. Um, I've got an old wooden dowel. I'll stick in here where the barrel goes through. Pick it up. I've got a small cast iron skillet that I don't use to really cook anything in anymore. I'll flip it upside down and set this on there so it's sitting, you know, like this. So it's hanging off the edge. Um, pop it in the oven. Set your oven for about two, 200 degrees and just let it let it bake for at least at least two hours and then um once once it's done baking for two hours just shut off the oven and let it sit there and it's gonna it's gonna take another good 30 minutes for that temperature to come down if not more because it's summer um until it's room temperature. And usually I'll try and time that to where it's going to be, I'll bake it right to the point where it's right before I go to bed um, and then shut it off. Um, I usually go for two, but sometimes I'll go for three, especially if it's a fresh finish, um, not scuffed up um, slide. If it's scuffed up, you can get away with less time because there's more for there for the paint to bond to. But these surface finishes that are in good shape, it's going to take a while. Uh, if you let this air dry, just leave it sitting room temperature air, it's going to take like two weeks for this stuff to kick over. If you bake it, um, the instructions say 195 degrees for three and a half hours. I've had good luck for letting it sit for an hour peeling the tape off and then baking it at 200 degrees for at least two hours. Now I stress at least, um, I check it at two and if it still looks like it's gonna, it needs some work, you'll know, you'll know, as you do these, you're going to see the surface finish change as you're heating it. It's actually going to get shiny and the shinier that finish, the better that means that paints flowing. As it flows, it's going to start covering and getting into these grip surface, these uh, sur um, slide serrations. And any little nicks, nooks, crannies, and imperfections in this slide, you're going to see it creep in. I didn't add paint to this. That's actually paint that's seeped in. Uh, it's going to seep in to the uh, roll stamps. The sh it, once you see that whole slide is shiny and you're over two hours, I would go at least two hours again. You can go ahead and shut that heat off and just let it let the heat gradually come down. And as that heat comes down, you're going to start seeing it getting duller and duller and duller and duller until you get to this and you can hear the finish. It's going to feel like a, a freshly Parker iced 1911. And that's the, that's the look we're going for. So I know this turned into a rambling wrong, long rant about paint. But I've had people ask me about this, and I wanted to go into it. So this was a good example. And this, and then I've done a lot of these, and you can still screw up. It happens. Um, I'm going to see if he's going to let me let this go. If he's still not happy with this, um, I'll get this back from him once once my paint arrives, because this is his carry gun. I, I actually, it's a guy I work with. I loaned him the Taurus while uh, while I was working on this, and. Uh, We'll, we'll go with it, and uh, if he wants me to go ahead and paint the whole thing, I'll get this back from him once the paint arrives, and uh, we'll finish that up. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun to do. You got to make sure you do it when the wife's not home, because it kind of stinks up the house when it's baking. Oh, oh one thing I forgot. I slapped some uh, grip tape on uh, the... Uh, slide release because it was starting to get a little banged up this side he's a right hand he's a right-handed guy so this side just is going to get rubbed out. he's never going to use this um just a little thing i do but anyway i'm rambling so that's what was going on with that glock and i know it shocked people oh my god darren's got a glock no i don't own a glock i just work on glocks uh the taurus is just on loan right now until while I'm working on this. It's still going to be my big carry gun while the DB9 is going to be my little carry gun. 
And uh, that's where we're at. Um, quick shout out to Siley Optics. Um, and who else do we have here? We're going to give a shout out to my friends down at Bucks Holsters. Official holster manufacturer of the channel. Uh, then a shout out to our friends at USCCA. Self-defense insurance, self-defense training. Look into them. And uh, and I know these guys are these are guys are somebody I just started working with, but so far I've been really happy with it. Is the guys at, at Borai? Um, actually, you know what? It's Bora too. I, I, I that that that's a mistake on my part. Bora two, um, because it looks like two eyes or two L's. Yeah, I don't know, but um, they need to put a little space in there if they want to say Bora two. But uh, these guys actually make a decent holster. I uh, wore it all day today, um, and I was really quite pleased with it. Um, of course, it's DB9. It's a very small thing, so it's, I just, you know, it doesn't even feel like it's there, which is what you want in a holster. So anyway, I'm rambling, and I'm tired, and uh, I need to get to bed. So you guys uh, be safe. Keep your powder dry, folks, and stay tuned for more videos.